Good afternoon. So everybody had nice lunch? So you're awake. Some people are awake at least. <laughs> okay, so we're going to have this next talk about building knowledge bases in platforms via mass collaboration on the internet by uh, Vishnuvardhan. Vishnuvardhan is associated with TCS, CIS. Vishnuvardhan is the program director access to knowledge at CIS and works for the creation and growth of free digital public knowledge infrastructures in Indian languages. A2K, short for access to knowledge, is funded by Wikimedia Foundation. Rahul, uh, may we have your attention please. A2K is funded by Wikimedia Foundation to work as an anchor team to catalyze the growth of Wikimedia movement in India. His work primarily includes virtual voluntary communi volunteer community building on Indic Wikipedias and qualitative and quantitative development of Indian languages Wikipedias. Hi. Yeah. Uh, I don't need this. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I, I've kept it very light. Uh, I've done graveyard uh, shifts myself, sitting there listening to the presentations after a very nice lunch. And uh, I know how you all feel about uh, having a couch right now, but uh, you know, we have to go on, right? Uh, so we'll start with a small activity uh, that I've recently learned, uh, learned uh, uh, during my visit to uh, one of the North Karnataka districts, Yadgir, uh, which is now an education district. It's called Kasa Kasa Varte. Uh, what is Kasa Kasa Varte? <laughs> okay, it's a Marathi word, Kasa Varte. Respond, Marathian. Yeah, Mane, how, how are you or how do you feel? And the answer is uh, Chan Chan Varte. Okay? So I want you to please, uh, uh, in my talk, uh, you don't have to uh, take any notes during the next one and a half hours because I'm not going to talk anything profound that you already don't know too much. So, uh, but if you want to look at your Facebooks and all, you're free to use your laptops. Uh, uh, no problem at all. But uh, don't carry your mobiles or pencils or notes, uh, feel free. Uh, I want you to all uh, stand up and uh, come into the center. Let's do a small uh, activity and uh, then I'll tell you about why we need to do, do this activity in graveyard shifts. All, all of you, including Ravina. <laughs> I'll call it. <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a seminar, it is a graveyard shift. <clears throat> Okay, we should be really uh, uh, fast, like a buck. <laughs> okay, uh, here. Uh, it's okay, let it be there. Uh, okay, come, Kritika. You, you can participate from there, no problem. Professor uh, Anachalam, you, you're not exempt from this. You, you didn't have your lunch? <laughs> You, you didn't have your lunch? I had. Then? Okay. First question, uh, who will answer? Why do we feel sleepy immediately after a heavy lunch? Raise your hands. Sir. All the blood goes to digestion. All the blood goes to Okay. Uh, if, if one were to give you, uh, uh, relate this to the mythology that we know, Mahabharata. Uh, everyone knows Mahabharata here? Yeah. You know, right? Little bit. I also know very little, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know Pandavas? Yes. Yeah. How many are there? Pandavas? Five. 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 And uh, they have Draupadi. Six. So typically, Bhima, who is one of the Pandavas, eats 50% of the food. And the rest of the five share the oh, spoils, 50%. Four. Yeah? Five, including okay. Draupadi. Okay. Including. So basically, if you see our system, the brain consumes 50% of the oxygen that we intake, that we take in. So the moment, you're, you're right, the moment we eat food, our digestive uh, system requires more oxygen to work and pulp it and put it out of the system, right? So the oxygen flow kind of diminishes to the brain. That's why, you know, we kind of feel slightly like, you know, just after one tequila type of feeling. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's already written. So the best thing, a lot of people, uh, uh, what they do is after lunch they go for coffee or tea, which is actually you know disrupting the digestive process and not generally good in the long term. 
So, uh, the simple thing that we can all do is to increase our intake of oxygen. Okay? That can be done by very simple breathing exercises, not too, do not do too much of pranayama or anything, but simple things. Okay? Now, we will do this kasa kasa varthe. When I say kasa kasa varthe, you should say, how do you respond? Chan chan varthe. But you should imitate my actions. Okay. Will you do it? I, I, am I visible to everyone? Okay, and uh, feel, please uh, loosen up. Okay, and uh, I'm no teacher. Okay. Kasa kasa varte? You have to exactly do. Don't raise left hand because I've raised it. Okay? Ha. Kasa kasa varte? Kasa kasa varte? Kasa kasa varte? Bad actor, sir. Really bad. You should do it nicely. Kasa kasa varte? Kasa kasa varte? Kasa kasa varte? Kasa kasa Now don't hit the people. Okay. Kasa kasa varte? 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 Very good. We'll start. That's okay. <laughs> we can edit it always. Okay. Uh, we, uh, uh, you don't have to relax. We are doing a, a real activity which is part of this thing. Okay, the talk. <coughs> uh, can you all uh, stand up as it is? Don't sit down. We are doing a real uh, activity which is relevant to this talk. You can stand up. And those of you who do not want to take part in this activity, feel free, you can check your Facebook. But this is a fun activity. Okay, stand up. I want you to say one, two. Let's uh, divide into two teams. And this is a real competition. We, we are going to do a sim, I want to do a simulation exercise of knowledge building, impromptu. Okay, uh, let, we need to build knowledge about something. We all have collectively so much of knowledge, right? So let us take anything, what can we take? What is so visible in this room other than people? I think water. Water. Yeah, yeah. Chocolates are there. I didn't see it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Water is the topic. Now we are going to uh, divide ourselves into two groups. Okay. Uh, the, the qualification for this activity is that you need to generate knowledge collectively. One group will generate a knowledge on water. The other group will also generate knowledge on water. Okay. Now, the, qual uh, the, the important thing that you need to all do is that each group should ensure is that whatever you generate should be participatory. Understood? Participatory means? Everybody should participate, not two, three people. Okay? Everybody should participate. It should be a collaborative thing. When I participate, it doesn't mean you all sit in a group and you do whatever you want. Everybody is participating, but there is no collaboration. So it has to be collaborative in that sense. Okay? And when you showcase this work, whatever knowledge that you have produced collectively, it should depict or basically everyone's voice has to be heard or everyone's whatever is there, little bit that they want to say about knowledge, okay, has to be represented, has to be shown. Okay? So the one group, I will work with them. The other group, you are left to figure out how you are going to do this activity. We will have, we will have 10 minutes exactly and in this time, you need to do everything. Okay? Ready? Start. One, two. Yeah, we'll, we'll now divide the groups. That's all. One, two, one, two, one, two. No, no, no. Start from here. Say it. One. I think all the ones, raise your hands. Okay, uh, you can, you are at your uh, own will, you can do whatever you want. Okay, go outside, you do, you take your paper, do whatever it is, I am working with group two. Okay, so group two also outside. Yeah. And please don't, uh, group one, don't cheat on group two, we are doing something really exciting.
from pollution to its quality to impurities that you want to describe. No need to interact with anyone. Think about it for two minutes, fill up your four uh, post-its, and then you come and arrange it on various things. You put it up here, and you can come and you feel, you know, this group may fit here or there. A theme will evolve automatically, right? We would have done end of 10 years, we would be able to showcase a lot more about what without having to write or do anything, right? Just a simulation. Two minutes for yourself. Then each one of you, you know, start putting it posters on various charts. If everything is coming into one chart, I don't think it will come. Because definitely you all have different aspects to say about water. Okay, got it? Simple? Any confusion? Okay. So putting it on the chart. Just write it first. Same order, don't pull it up and down. It's not like that. It means judo. But it's also telling him to work telling him. Tata, 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 Sources of water. Sources of water. And also different forms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
can take one more. But. Okay, uh, we will come back to this assignment midway in the presentation and see how each team has done. Okay. Okay, uh, coming to knowledge bases or knowledge platforms. If I were to use a more comfortable term, I would say knowledge repositories, right? So, what was a knowledge platform like, say, in 2000? Pranesh? Sumandra, what was a knowledge platform in 2000? In 2000. Year 2000, 13 years ago. Libraries, Libraries okay. 1950. Sorry, one person at a time. Newspapers, libraries, dictionaries. books, dictionaries. Word of mouth, like places. Huh? People getting together, speaking to each other. Right. Word of mouth. Radio. 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 Eight, 1850. Coffee Sorry. Coffee, coffee houses. 1850, you had coffee houses? Yes. Coffee day? Yes. Coffee day was there? Yes. Manuscripts. Manuscripts, okay. Bibles, markets, right? Okay. <clears throat> now, can we say market a platform? That's debatable. So, 1650. Newspapers. You're too young to know that 1650 there are newspapers. <laughs> Christian missionaries, 1650. You should read up your history. Read a print technology history. Periodicals, 1650. Yeah. Travelogues, kind of. Travelogues, okay. Travelogues, acceptable. Not periodicals. 1450. 1450. Okay, basically, what I'm, the point that I'm trying to drive, 1450, it is very critical to where we are because that's when the printing press was invented and by whom? Gutenberg. Gutenberg. Around that time, there's no exact date, 1450 is the date, right, approximately. Now, it takes almost, if you see the massive utilization of print technology for the production, dissemination, distribution of knowledge or broadly speaking knowledge, we should not get into too, uh, too much of a deeper debate into what constitutes knowledge, I'm using it as a lucid term. Okay, so this presentation. So the production, dissemination, distribution, even constitution of knowledge, okay, happens with the arrival of the print technology. Not immediately, the moment the printing press gets invented, but it takes time, right? Now, if I were to ask a futurist, I'm not even going back to 1100 and 1000, which is hardly 1000 years is nothing in human history, right? What about 2050? Anybody's guess, right? Anybody's guess. We don't know what it is. But what, what, I'm, uh, what is very important, I feel, for us uh, who, are, who are in the business of uh, uh, knowledge production, who are consti uh, continuously in the business of knowledge production, uh, consumption of knowledge, is to really look at you know, how a particular technology comes in and how is it impacting you know, these four aspects of knowledge, which is production, distribution, dissemination, and constitution. Okay, why I'm saying that, or how is how does it, you know, uh, uh, why I'm going back to 1450 is because I think there is something very critical and very relevant that the print as a technology tells us. Do you know that oral history was considered knowledge as early as 1880, 1900, 1920 across India? Okay, there somebody who knew. Five lakh slokas was the knowledgeable person. Coming comes the print technology, and it literally constitutes what is knowledge in Indian languages. I'm more sticking to our immediate reality, right? So there is a deep impact. You now, looking at print, it kind of tells us that a technology comes, and it is not just the infrastructure aspect of it. There is something much more deeper. It digs deeper into our culture, our language us, our construction of our bodies, various aspects, right?
which I am calling techno sociality of knowledge production. I would say, as someone who is looking in this institute, uh, Institute on Internet and Society, if you were to look at the society aspect, I think this is where we can aptly capture, if you were to look at knowledge, the whole domain of knowledge and what it is doing, the internet as a technology, I feel there is a subcutaneous relationship that the technology and you know what it does in society has. This I am telling you is illustrated by print technology. And sometimes what we take for granted that a repository, a library, for granted we assume it, is a, it has a natural repository of knowledge is not even 100 years old in India. Right? We so take it for granted, we invest money, do so many things. I am saying it is important to have that awareness if you were to look at future, if you were to look at building knowledge bases in the internet context, in the context of technology. Now, what is Prim telling me is that you go back and see from uh, Europe in the West to Indian context, Prim brings, brings in tectonic changes to knowledge production, to the domain of knowledge. And uh, as I've said, you know, it impacts in these four domains, right? So the same kind of tectonic shifts, I feel, given the kind of uh, little bit of research that I've done, I don't think any other technology after print has done this kind of massive change in the way knowledge is getting reconstructed, the way internet is doing, right? We will see into how this is happening, okay? I'm just giving you some examples. It is not too far away in the history. This is the printing press. Uh, I've given you, this is all from the commons, uh, Wikimedia commons, uh, that was being showcased to uh, the King Edward IV. And uh, that was uh, production of knowledge, right? Pointer like that. Okay. So this, if I were to say, was production of knowledge, say 1850. This since 2000 or say 2010 is where we produce knowledge, right? More actively. Even printing presses are using this, a version of this, right? This was the repository of knowledge. This is still there, University of Columbia's library. Massive giant structure. Now the same amount of knowledge that can be put up here is now in one server or two, three servers, right? I'm saying storage of knowledge or even dissemination of knowledge, distribution of knowledge. And even I'm saying it affects our reading. We don't realize how it has impacted our body, our eyes, our senses. I was just sitting to Kritika when I came in in the morning. Throughout the talk, she was searching, finding out information, ICPI, TCPI, this, that. She was searching this, that. And you see, she is not reading a book. Her mode of reading, her our very mode, our very method of reading, she is going from hyperlink to hyperlink. I don't think she has read three sentences completely. But she is reading. Our habit of reading has changed, right? So what in, it's very important to understand the techno sociality of technology and how you know the knowledge is getting reconstituted, right? Now coming to the knowledge platforms, I'm just giving a brief history. I, I think it's important to look at it. Uh, it's not a detailed, much more deeper thing. I'm sure some of you must have read in greater detail about it, but I, I think I'm trying to make a larger point. Uh, I think everyone has understood, right? So with the coming of technology, now, we are in uh, 2013, it is very much possible to have massive knowledge platforms, which otherwise would take hundreds of years to build, for instance, okay, in terms of a knowledge repository, is very much possible now within no span of time with the coming of internet technology. Right? I'm giving you these very conspicuous examples. I'm sure all of you know of these things. What is this? Baidu Baike? Baidu Baike, anyone knows? Chinese. 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 What it is? It is a Chinese, it's based on Baidu, the search engine, but it's a Chinese version of Wikipedia, which is much more massive than English Wikipedia. We all think the biggest massive knowledge collaboration platform on internet, most of the people think 
It is English Wikipedia, which has about 4.3 million articles. But Baidu Baike, which is a Chinese uh, government run thing, literally, it's a closed wiki in that sense, has more than 5.3 artic million articles on, uh, on, on it. And similarly, Hundong is also one thing. Similarly, English Wikipedia has about 4.2 million articles on various topics, issues. Uh, Kata Wiki is a, is a knowledge platform that has details of all the catalogs, uh, library catalogs, for instance. Wiki Educator is uh, an open educational resource platform which is trying to put together various teaching, learning, lesson plans, various other aspects. Similarly, we have in the domain of uh, physicality, in the domain of our maps, we have Open Street Map Project, which is literally annotates, writes, creates metadata you know, on the maps. Similarly, uh, I'm giving you more Indian examples. There are still work in progress. Pub, uh, PAD.MA, Public Access Digital Media Archive. This is a very richly annotated uh, media archive or a video archive where video has been written on with the text. And you can search video, which is otherwise now impossible. In a video, you can go to a particular key term, and you can go to that particular slice of that video. So that is there. Similarly, we have Sahapedia, which is looking at creating uh, a kind of Wikipedia kind of closed, but it's a closed wiki uh, on Indian performing arts. Okay? Now, here also knowledge platforms, but I'm putting them separately, which is Internet Archive, JSTOR, DSAL, Digital South Asia Library, Digital Library of India. Here, what is the difference? These both are knowledge platforms for me. But what is the difference, say, between Internet Archive and, say, English Wikipedia? We'll not uh, get into the, the quality of it, but yeah. Yeah? Subscription that is there. Uh, for instance, uh, some of these could be subscription based also, but or can become. I think the major thing is this is not participatory. This is literally talking about creating a knowledge base or a platform where you are literally importing the knowledge that is there in the print context, digitizing it and putting it up as a knowledge platform. But I'm saying we, as, as we have just seen, we don't anymore read book, read books the way we used. Our reading habits have changed. People just, in an article, they want to quickly go to that particular, uh, you know, particular portion, want to search and go and find information, right? These are all dead data in that sense. You can even put a cat picture and give a meta, uh, 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 what is it, a term saying that this is Sumandro, it will show us Sumandro, right, in an internet archive. It is possible because it's the keyword that you are, but whereas this is searchable, right? This is much more richer. This is something that is generated, right? Whereas this is a different way of visualizing knowledge platform. I think it's important to understand these differences because this becomes extremely critical when you come to the Indian language context and content in Indian languages. Now, <coughs> we have seen, you know, these things are very high, massive knowledge platforms talking about 42 lakh articles, 53 lakh, you know, entries, articles, right? And precisely, there is no doubt, I don't have to tell you all, you have been here and you know it, you are in the digital era, that the spread of internet has made this possible. Otherwise, it was not possible, it was, not it was impossible to think 10, 15 years ago to think of these kind of platforms, right? So I'm saying, but how? How did this kind of seamless mass collaboration of creating knowledge platforms happen? How did that happen? And here is where I want to introduce you to Wiki. And here, let us take a brief break. Uh, each team will come and present their this thing. Okay? I, I think it will take too much of time. So out of all the four sheets, can one sheet people, can four people come and present what they have done about water? the group two, please. Then the group one will present uh, what they have done and then we'll briefly analyze how we have done it. First, get up. One pass, get up, don't delay it. Give mic. Now we have taken a very mundane topic called water, right? And we hardly had 10 minutes and we all had to. We'll have a barefoot scholar presentation. Right, barefoot scholar. Fast, fast. 
I think one person is enough. You also want to do it? Okay. Okay, so uh, okay. very quickly what we've done um, as, a, as a large group is each one of us wrote two things. Don't explain the process. Tell what is it. Oh, Give really? them the knowledge what, that you've captured. Knowledge without process is... Knowledge without okay. process. So um, we have uh, four uh, qualities of water. This sheet describes basically water as being both a force for benefits and uh, uh, something that can bring about a lot of misery. So on the positive side, uh, we have, of course, rain in itself, uh, monsoon, um, and all that it brings with it. And monsoon, of course, has all the connotations in Indian culture. Negative, no rain, farmer suicide, conflict, negotiation, drought, rainfall shortages, decreased rainfall, uh, scarcity, pollution, HTO scarce. Um, in the middle, we have um, people and uh, uh, things which are either affected by or take part with uh, uh, water or interact with water. So there's, of course, farmer. Um, there's uh, uh, water as being an essential uh, ingredient that can be over-consumed. There's monsoon dependency, which is both good and bad, of course. Um, and the last thing we have is the usage of, uh, of water. So we have here uh, uh, rainwater harvesting, um, actually only rainwater harvesting as, as possible, usages of water which are uh, uh, um, environmental friendly usages of water. Thanks for that. Okay, that's yeah. it. So you, you want to do it quickly? Yeah. Thanks. That's okay. No, just uh, keep it. Yeah. So Professor Arnachalam, this uh, it's still, they're still generating, they've still captured knowledge, okay? There's okay. much more, there are two more charts, but we'll stick to two only. Yeah. Uh, uh, first, we looked at the uh, uh, real situation, what it is today. Uh, uh, there's a water scarce. There's it's there? Argument. You point out yeah, the water, words. Water is scarce. Okay, well, water is, uh, there's tremendous scarcity for water. It is becoming costly day by day, and therefore, what is happening today is public property is privatized. So business and uh, um, Aquafina and uh, people like them come into the market and then they make money out of a natural uh, God-given resource which is common to all. So business has come, they are even advertised it is pure. God only knows if it is really pure. And uh, they sell canned water and so on. This is the situation today. So the key point here is public property is becoming private. Uh, what we want it to be in future is uh, we need clean water, it should be sweet, it should be pure, healthy, it should be refreshing, uh, it should be clear and so on. This is what we want and it also gives tremendous amount of uh, energy to people by hydroelectric dams or uh, um, uh, hydrogen batteries and so on. So uh, it provides tremendous amount of energy. So in the Indian mythology, Someone in the team suggested uh, water can also uh, be a form of Vishnu. Me? Okay. okay. I'm not form of water. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It has also a given connotation. Right. Okay, great. So someone from one, team one, come and present. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Chemical characteristics of water, uh, it's H2O, two molecules of hydrogen and one of oxygen. Uh, physical characteristics uh, are that it's uh, a liquid, uh, it uh, uh, displays buoyancy, uh, uh, the boiling point is 100 degrees Celsius, melting point uh, is zero, the triple point of water is 4 degrees Celsius. Uh, earth and water, 70% uh, of the earth uh, is water, it's contained in rivers and oceans and ponds and other water bodies. Uh, it can either be as fresh water or sea water. Uh, there is something called the water cycle, uh, which is the process, uh, the, the continuous process of, uh, of, of groundwater and ocean uh, uh, being converted into rain and again being converted into this and uh, rivers do uh, lead to sea, uh, seas and renewable, it's a renewable energy source earlier through water uh, mills and now through uh, damming of water. 
and uh, glaciers hold water and provide sources to, to rivers uh, and all the water uh, we uh, drink uh, can be said to be 2 billion years old. Human beings and water, uh, under that heading would come uh, the fact that 97% of, uh, of the human body is water. Uh, relevance of uh, water in human life uh, as, a, as uh, a necessity uh, for life. Uh, uh, drinking water is a scarce resource. Uh, all ancient civilizations have been founded near sources of water. Uh, water allows for transportation of goods and people, and uh, hence it is uh, very important. Uh, and uh, water outside of Earth is often searched for as proof of extraterrestrial life. And waterborne diseases are still uh, some of the most common in the developing world. Uh, it's used as a cleansing agent, uh, as mentioned. Have, have you alone written this, or have you been working on it, or no, no, was it done a, in the last ten minutes? This is a collaborative okay. thing that happened over uh, Let, let's, less let's, than ten minutes. Yeah. Uh, it's a renewable energy source, uh, and uh, it has an important role to play in many world religions. Uh, it is often said to be life uh, philosophically. And in India, we have uh, an interstate <laughs> water disputes resolution mechanism. Right. Uh, and there's more, actually, so I can continue. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's good. <laughs> we will see. OK. <clears throat> when you said that everyone participated, how many people have written that thing when I say participated from group one? No, no delegation. How many people have actually participated in writing? So, sorry, please. We chose one person. And everyone else was just shouting, and he was like writing like crazy. So, you didn't participate at all? I said, I did. I also gave suggestions and wrote them down. Right. Where is the chart? We want to see the chart of the No, no, it's just the. Okay. Right. Okay. <laughs> That's good. You know, it is good. It, this is just a simulation. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, when you participate, imagine, right? You, it was like a group activity. Now, the same thing. Imagine you are in various locations. This team, with their, you know, they're not really done a collaborative work. They've done a collaborative work in a different way. It was not a discussion. It was not a delegation, right? They just wrote. The process was simple. They took four post-it notes, wrote two ideas on it, what they think of water. There could have been a lot of repetition, but they thought for themselves, and they wrote, and they put it up there. So they participated in thinking, in putting it up there. right? And there is no order in which they did. They all did it in the same time, which is two minutes. right? Isn't it? So and no one particular person's thought has influenced the other particular person till they put it down. right? Whereas here, it is participatory, right? But there was lots of repetition also in our group. Lots of people said the same thing multiple times. Right. Uh, now, I'm saying in the, in the thought process, did you influence each other's thought process? Of course. I'm saying it is possible when you're shouting out loud, right? Of course. But here... It's called serial processing and... and we right. Also, right. But we also had, like, we were a huge group. So there were small discussions in, in small groups, like dynamically. So right. three people discussing a topic. And then they were like, OK, shouting it to Pranesh when it right. was finished. So. Good, good. Now, I'm, I'm not saying there is no, it's not about proving collaboration. It's about the process of production of something, which is where I want to introduce the key term wiki. I think we'll just see a brief video about wiki. How many people are aware of what is wiki? Not heard the word, know in detail. You, uh, you, you are a different person, right? <laughs> but how many people really know inside out what is wiki as a model? You know it? Can, yeah. So, how many people don't know it? Yeah. Set up wiki. Ah, that's a good question. Set up a wiki. You have edited it. Okay. Can we have an audio to this thing? Who is this? Uh, can you have audio to the, this thing? Okay. I will just uh, introduce you uh, uh, to this. Let us get back to the presentation. How was this mass collaboration of knowledge production happened you know, in a seamless way, where they did not have to sit in one space, right? where they were in dispersed locations? Audio. Baker. Called Ward Cunningham. right? How many people know Ward Cunningham? 
Okay, uh, all those people who lifted hands saying that we know Wiki is like, you really don't know the Wiki history, right? Ward Cunningham was the first person, okay, to set up what he called Wiki Wiki Web. It is a particular, what did he do? He created a, a platform or a mode of working together for his programmers. Wiki, what is the meaning of Wiki? Quick, quick. 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 which language it is taken from? Hawaiian language, okay? So, wiki wiki web, he simply said very quick web, okay? This was done in 1994 and this becomes a, this gets a completely new life with Wikipedia using the same method of or almost the same platform to create knowledge. This was in 2000 and you see where Wikipedia has reached. And now, I'm saying as late as 2010, 13, it's become so mainstream that individual organizations, small, small entities like HP, IBM, various other companies, even NGOs who are looking at capturing their knowledge, which is getting produced in their own small setup, are looking at Wiki as a mode. Okay? So we'll quickly understand, simple video. Uh, I don't know how many people have watched this video. The common crafts. Okay. Can all of you see this? Going on a camping trip. They need to bring the right supplies because they're backpacking. The group needs to plan and plan well, so coordination is key. They're all computer users. Sorry, I think we need to just go back. Yeah. I don't know why this display is bad. Okay. Uh, These four friends are going on a camping trip. They need to volume bring the right supplies away. because they're backpacking. The group needs to plan and plan well, so coordination is key. They're all computer users, so they start planning with an email. It starts with one, but quickly becomes a barrage. Email is not good at coordinating and organizing a group's input. This is the old way. Boo! The important information is scattered across everyone's inbox. This isn't coordination. Let's start over. There is a better way. It requires using a website called a wiki. Using a wiki, the group can coordinate their trip better. This is the new way. Yay! Most wikis work the same way. They make it easy for everyone to change what appears on a web page with a click of a button. It's as easy as erasing a word and rewriting it. The buttons are really important. There are two that are essential. They are edit and save, and they are always used together. Let's see them in action. Here are our camping friends, and here is a wiki website. Like all wikis, it has an edit button. All you have to do is click it, and the web page becomes a document ready for editing. Editing the page means that you can add, remove words, or change how they look, just like writing a letter. Once you're finished editing, you can click save, and the document becomes a web page once again, and is ready for the next person to edit it. Easy. Edit, write, and save. Using this process, a group can coordinate more easily. Let's apply this to our camping friends who need to bring the right supplies. Mary signs up for a wiki and then sees the new site for the first time. She clicks the edit button to get started. She creates two lists for camping, what we have and what we need. Under we have, she lists the things she will bring, a cooler, a stove, and flashlight. Under we need, she lists items that others need to bring. Compass, lighter, water, and food. She finished the process by clicking save, and the website now has lists for the camping trip. Now it's John's turn. John visits the wiki website and clicks edit. The page becomes a document ready for him to make changes. John volunteers to bring food and water, so he moves those to the have column. He also realizes the group will need a knife and rope. Once he's finished, he clicks save, and the wiki is ready for the next person. Henry visits the wiki, clicks edit so he can edit the page. He remembers they need a tent. Henry saves the page and the wiki is ready for Frank. Frank edits the page and agrees to bring the remaining items, completing the process. He saves the page and then realizes something awesome. The group has created the perfect camping list, without email. Yay! But wait, one thing is missing. They need a location for the campsite. The wiki can help with this too, but another page is needed. John visits the wiki and clicks edit to edit the page. He types in the word locations and highlights it. He then clicks the link button. 
This changes the word locations into a link to a new page. John clicks Save, and next, Frank visits the wiki. He sees the lists and clicks on the Locations link to arrive at the new page. This new page enables the group to use the same Edit, Write, Save process to coordinate locations. This process can be repeated over and over. These three buttons, Edit, Save, and Link, make it possible to organize a great camping trip or create the world's biggest encyclopedia. Okay. Simple. Wiki is nothing but a browser-based editing and there is always a version history. You can go back and see what the other person has done. It never gets faded away. And it is not a static browser, static website like say DLI or like the Internet Archive where someone puts up the content and you cannot do anything. You cannot modify it, you cannot add to it or you cannot take away something that is not relevant. If it is a wrong tag that is given to a particular document, Instead of Andhra Pradesh, it is given as Karnataka, and Andhra Pradesh uh, assembly debates are coming up in the search, whenever you search for Karnataka debates, you don't have the power to change, or you, you know, it literally wastes your time, right? And also you will see the kind of participatory nature that this wiki has. Now this is, what, what is, the person said it has created the best knowledge resource in, in the world, which is Wikipedia. I'm, so, I'm saying, use, look at the simple wiki model, and what has it resulted in? We now have, Wikipedias in 286 languages across the globe, okay? And 334 language Wikipedias are in incubation. This is one organization, a group of people thinking of using Wiki for a particular purpose. And there are already 2.6 uh, crore articles that are there on various Wikipedias. And these articles in English it's about 42 uh, lakh articles and uh, these are the kind of contributors that are there and they are never in a single space. They don't have to be in a single room like this. They are participating in their given time slice from wherever they are, right? And this is the kind of consumption that it has. I don't think any library ever would have these, if you were to even divide it by one tenth, these many number of visitors, right? They have about what it is, 30, whatever, 36 crore, 50 lakh page views a month, it's not even a year, right? And you should understand the number of paid employees which have created all this is 174. And some of the NGOs in India have more than 174 employees, right? So <laughs> one is not just the technology, which is internet, definitely it has contributed a lot, but also you know, the, the kind of content that is generated, the voluntary contribution, and the wiki model. I want to come here now to the Indian context and look at what is happening in the Indian language context. That is about the world broader context about knowledge basis platforms, how they have been built, and how wiki is very critical, right? Now, looking at the Indian context, if you see, we have about 14 active Wikipedias. Out of this, the top five Indian Wikipedias have about total all of them together is just 2,56,160 articles. Here, why I'm showing you, the, uh, you know, these uh, Wikipedia says, uh, we have to think about there is a mass, massive population. We are talking about penetration into the, you know, in the morning we have talked about the technology aspect, how the infrastructure has to now go, you know, penetrate and be available to masses. But what is the content? What, where, what is the kind of knowledge that these masses will look at? They, obviously, most of them don't know English, right? Obviously, mobile penetration, internet penetration is happening, is on the rise year on year, if you see the comparative picture, given whatever technological lags or policy impediments, whatever said and done, there's massive penetration of internet, right? And there is an increasing demand for content in these languages. Just to give you an example, Hindi Wikipedia has just 97,000 articles, whereas if you see the page views per month, it is about 59 lakh page views per month, which is quite massive. There is obviously a demand for knowledge, for information in Indian languages, right? Now, but 
But the thing is, this is not growing. Imagine if this becomes about 20 lakh articles, every, because people are trying to search for information knowledge in their languages, if we provide more knowledge, more information, rather than just digitizing and putting up, say, various journals and things like that. So it requires a building of knowledge in Indian languages that is still to happen, unlike in, unlike in English or some other foreign languages. And there are various challenges which we need to understand. Uh, Sumandro, uh, who is here, who has developed a, if you, uh, this is a very complex data, you will not be able to understand. Can you just come and show what you have done? Uh, he has uh, worked with the A2K team in CIS and he has developed a motion chart which will give you a 10 year slice of the growth of Indian language Wikipedias during the same time when English Wikipedia has grown. Because most of you are bilingual speakers. You not just operate in English, but you also know your mother tongue or some other Indian language. How many of you use your own mother tongue on the internet? Right? That's, that's really a very small percentage. Isn't, is it that you cannot write in your mother tongue? How many people can write in their mother tongue? By hand. Or? By hand. <laughs> then all of us almost can write in our mother tongue, right, or one of the Indian languages. And we have, there is a lot of otherwise knowledge that is produced in these Indian languages. But if you see the state of, uh, 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 sorry, yeah, yeah here, uh, this uh, Sumandra has developed this uh, tool uh, which is uh, basically giving you a sense of uh, the growth of Indian language Wikipedia projects, okay, I have given you dense data. He rather puts it in a simple video how these have developed, okay. Yeah, you can. So, uh, what you see right now is the usual interface of the motion chart if you are using the Google Charts library. It is built uh, using the Gapminder software which was developed by Hans Rosling earlier. Uh, I was. Sorry? No, no, clearly not. Come on, come on. Not, not, not at all. Okay. Uh, anybody has want to see how their particular language has grown? Any language preferences? Sure. Hebrew, oh, Indian really languages. Really, sorry, only uh, Indian languages. Yeah. <laughs> Tamil. You can tag Tamil. Okay. So what it allows you, uh, do you know how a motion chart works? I, I, I guess most of us have seen the Hans Rosling videos. So it has, um, on the x-axis, it has time. Um, no, it doesn't, sorry. Total so editors. The, the x-axis has the total editors for each language. The y-axis has total number of articles for each language. And if I play, if I click on play, then that changes the time. That gives how, so you and you see, see how that. different languages have shifted from time to time. So it's really from 2005, most Indian languages started growing. And you can see how Tamil has moved up. Once it ends, there are some interesting patterns that we find. Also, I should have mentioned this at the first. I did this with a friend of mine named Sajjad, who is a programmer. And you should also go to the Indic Wikipedia project site. You have a lot more um, other visualizations there. There's a poster for that at the corner of the room. So as you can see, Tamil is one of the um, best performing Indian Wikipedia projects. Um, something to compare very briefly, if you compare this with, say, Newari, which is a far less spoken... Okay. Bengal is this, Kannada, somewhere here is Bengali, you close by. Bengali, it will show here. Oh, I remember this by now. <laughs> yeah. So Bengali has... Uh, Punjabi is much lower, sorry. Punjabi, just uh, put your... Uh, Cursor on it? So on, yeah. Editors. Exactly. Because so it has been created by bots. So, uh, tools, uh, particular softwares. So, you know, basically, you know, what you need to understand if you were to put English Wikipedia or any of the Western language Wikipedias, these things will, will be invisible, literally. 
This is when we are looking at Indic languages alone. These are the only Indic language Wikipedia trends that we have captured. And you can see the highest is, uh, highest is Hindi, right? Then you will see Tamil, then you will see Telugu or Malayalam, Bengali, these things. But most of the things are less than 10,000 articles. Means they are really not knowledge platforms in the sense, in that sense. So there is a lot of work to be done. Uh, another thing, uh, sorry? For the smallest one? I think that is uh, Kashmiri. Kashmiri. Um, also we have uh, decided to use logarithmic, logarithmic scale um, which allows you to understand uh, small differences better. Um, just to um, just to uh, I mean emphasize the point that Vishnu just made, if you use linear scale, this is the state of matters. So I mean, it seems that uh, the smallest one and the highest one are much uh, further apart when you use logarithmic scale. In linear scale, it's really not. It's mostly close by. Um, there's a bit of distortion in this image due to uh, the total being here as well. Um, but anyhow, so that is that is really more the um, the actual picture than the logarithmic scale. Logarithmic scale. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Sumandro. Uh, now, to coming back to the Indian question and the knowledge basis, uh, there are generic challenges when we are looking at building knowledge platforms in Indian languages, which are, you know, which are challenges for any wiki, for any kind of collaborative platform like Wikipedia. The generic challenge is to uh, basically quality, relevance and consistency. Now, you go to any faculty person, he will say, what is the quality of a Wikipedia article or what is the quality of a, so say something that is there on Padma or something like that, because it is constantly under change. So this is something that has, that becomes a concern in terms of larger acceptability by everyone. It will take some time and the relevance of the content that comes up. What is the point if you have, say, an article titled Bombay and there are two lines written about Bombay? Is it really a knowledge source? You know, so that is the challenge that one has to address. When I am giving you these things because when you are looking at wikis in your own context, you know, you should be aware of these challenges in wherever you are in building collaborative knowledge platforms. And consistency of knowledge because each one has a different things to say, different uh, grammar, different syntax, different way of writing things. So that becomes a major challenge. So and the biggest uh, stumbling block is suitable motivation of the contributors because nobody gets paid to write on these platforms, to contribute on these platforms. There are closed wikis, like for instance in the case of Canada, we have a Kanaja website, which is designed on a Wikipedia style, but it is commissioned articles that are written, paid, paid to people and they write it. But they never grow because it is not really mass mobilization of knowledge. Okay, a person can write 100 articles in a year. Wikipedia itself started as a closed wiki, Newpedia, when people were getting paid to write those Newpedia, but when they started using wiki as a model, it immediately takes off within no time. Within less than six weeks, Wikipedia becomes more than Newpedia and the same persons, which is Jimmy Wales and Larry Sanger were behind the Newpedia and Wikipedia, right? And another major issue is the scalability of this thing, okay? Now coming to the specific Indian uh, context. There are a lot of challenges that we face, which are sometimes very unique, which is uh, mostly, I would say, not infrastructure in terms of reach, but in infrastructure in terms of putting our language on the web, on the internet. The major challenge is typing. You ask anyone, they are comfortable to write. Like Sumandra would say, writing, okay, but typing Bengali, no. It is not as easy as typing in English because you are so used to it. And there are various challenges to typing uh, 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 on the web. It is still not a seamless process. And the other major, major stumbling block for the creation of uh, massive knowledge platforms in Indian languages is OCR. And you know the complexity of Indian scripts, right? How many people understand the basics of OCR? What is OCR? Optical character, Optical character recognition. If there is something in a PDF form, you scan it and you run an OCR software, it converts it into text and you can then search the text, that is OCR. So what is the problem of OCR for Indian languages? Uh, I, I, 
but why it cannot recognize? Where is the this thing? I will tell you it is very particular to our language. Okay? Now, uh, uh, the usual example that I give is three lady. Okay? Three, if you were to write in English, how do you write it? S T R E E. Right? Now, imagine if you were to write three in Hindi. Okay? Right? Or even in Telugu, for instance. Others is a zipped language almost. So, when you type actually sa, ta, ra, e, it is becoming this. Now, the computer has to decode, understand this or something, this or something, this or something, this or something, and bring it back together. When it is scanning this image, looking at the material, the type font, the typesetting is different, whereas the typesetting now is different. For instance, uh, in Telugu, It cannot be, it, it will not always come in the same thing. So, when it is scanning, something goes down because the letters get arranged in Tamil, Malayalam, Hindi, it is not so much of a problem. But I am saying generally OCR is not yet a foolproof thing, which is a major stumbling block. And let us get back to, and there are various other technical uh, troubles like browser compatibility in Mozilla, you can see, in Internet Explorer, you cannot see, on Mac, you can see, font display is, is an issue. So, which is basically deterring even interested people who are now, who have laptops, who can type, who are taking the pain, but still these are something that are challenges that are there. And there is a dearth of quality content available in digital format, because to create knowledge, you need to have some reference, some citation, some source. So that is not there too much, that is also, it is almost like a chicken and egg question that is happening. And there are different standards, formats, generations. There are generations of softwares, lot of data, for instance, you look at government, uh, www.gov.in which has all the government data, data.gov.in, uh, some of the data that was collected by the government in 1980s or 1990s, even on computers, is not compatible with the kind of formats in 2000 or 2010, for instance. So, you put the data, there is a lot of incompatibility. So, similar thing happens even with scanning, digitization, that is a major concern. Everybody is doing their own number. So, there is no best practice or there is no uniformity. And similarly, relative lack of research or academic standards in Indian languages, which gets transferred onto the Indian language Wikipedias, you have substandard content, substandard knowledge, and the lack of knowledge sharing culture. Uh, 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 this is something very uh, disturbing in the Indian context. Even if you look at uh, torrent websites, uh, you see many number of leeches from India, but very less number of seeders from India. So this is a challenge, really. Yeah. Documents, and you know there are projects. Google again has an amazing project in that uh, respect. And you just sort of meta tag an article, and you—it's a sort of a place filler until you manage to do OCR and whatever. Isn't that being done? Tagging is useful. That is already being done. A lot of metadata is created, but I'm saying that is still not comprehensive. For instance, an ad, a book could be relevant uh, in thousand ways. Maximum meta tags that you can give are twenty. These are very broad. For instance, you are looking at a very specific thing, which is possible in a text search, is not possible in an image search thing. But it is being done, not just Google. You look at archive.org, which is the best resource than Google for Indian language material. Archive.org, Internet Archive. It has about 23,000 uh, Telugu books. I do not think any library in AP has those many rare books, for instance. But people are not able to access it because of the, you know, this issue and uh, the insularity or the niche communities that happens. Now, what is it that we are trying to do? I have uh, 10 more minutes. How does one build a ma mass knowledge platform, especially in the Indian context? Uh, and this is something that we are trying to do as part of uh, access to knowledge at CIS. Okay? But this is something uh, I have put together as a more generic thing which anybody can take back to their institution and try and implement. I see there are three uh, key things uh, for any uh, mass knowledge platform like Wikipedia. One is the people who actually contribute. The second and the key thing is the platform that is available to all. And the third thing is you need to catalyze. It does not happen by itself. So you need to run a program or put in some processes. So at the people level, 
it is very important that you communicate knowledge sharing objectives, you know why you are doing this. So, a lot of awareness building program which looks very simple, but has to be done. You know this is what it is available, you can generate this kind of knowledge, you need to talk to niche groups which produce, which work on particular knowledge theme, say cinema, say performing arts, all these aspects. And uh, you need to make this entire process fun. You cannot make it a very awesome, it is not an academic rigorous process, like for instance writing an academic article or putting it up on JSTOR, right. So, this has to be made fun and you need to have key people appoint ambassadors. It is basically, it is a kind of virtual volunteer community building exercise. And I am telling you in Indian context, it has not been done before. Though it looks very simple from the outside, it is really complex. It is not easy to achieve, mobilize a community to contribute on Indian Wikipedias. Is there a profile of a Wikipedia volunteer that you can kind of describe? What kind of a person is that? Anyone who gets onto Wikipedia, logs in and contributes, does more than five edits. Those who are persistent, you have to be some kind of a special, what, how would you describe them? There are, there are, you get onto Wikipedia and you can find out who are active contributors. It is all open. Right now, no. Uh, it depends from language to language. We have been having a different kind of, still we are in the learning phase. For instance, the Telugu uh, community is quite different, say, from the Odia community, which are neighboring states, compared to Malayalam community, which are completely, you know, a different bunch. So, I cannot generalize right now who is an, you know, uh, quote unquote, you know, uh, ideal Wikipedian. So, you cannot really have a profile right now. Uh, sorry. Also, I mean, this is our experience that Wikipedia does have some proprietary assignments over knowledge. Is it true? Because we try to do set up a Wikipedia page about a city development plan that the local government doesn't want to set up, right. and we were refused, saying that we will not set it up because it belongs to the city. So the right. knowledge belongs to the city. If they do, city agency, so right. if they don't want to set it up, we can't let you set it up. Is that is that the case? No, I do not think that is exactly the answer I think they would have given. It is, yeah, it is more about whether something is notable or not. It is a particular, uh, you know, stance that the Wikipedia community has taken. It is nothing to do with any one or two people. So, uh, we will talk about, you know, we will not get into uh, greater detail about the Wikipedia policies that we can take up one on one, okay. But let us get back to the wiki structure, which I think is very important to understand. And the second thing is about the platform itself that you are setting up in your own institution or in your own state, wherever you are working. It should be basically user friendly. It should be easily available and adaptable. It should be like your Facebook page. You cannot create something that is a very cumbersome thing for someone to understand, learn and get into it. Then it will never grow. Uh, this is the problem that Wikipedia have faced, say for instance, four years ago, five years ago. Now they are increasingly becoming more easy to get on and contribute. Similarly, offline outreach is very key, even if it is within your small geographical region or an institution, whatever it is, you need to have an on offline outreach uh, to effectively use the online platform. Do not think you have set up the infrastructure and it will work. Some effort has to be put into running the platform. And about the program, basically you need to have a feedback loop that is key, because you think you have the best system, but the community has to feed you back. So, you need to create that feedback loop, that is something that one has to work on. And behavioral statistics are, uh, statistical data is very key, like you are saying, who is an ideal, you know, contributor, you know, wh what are their particular, you know, times of contribution or what is the particular theme that they are contributing, things like that. So, you need to constantly do that and you need to reinvent and replicate the program constantly. Uh, there is no one, you cannot just think you have done it and that is a blueprint. It has to be changed, it has to be reinvented. Similarly, you need to look at multiple channel awareness user connect programs. You need to connect to them even virtually, even through their Facebook accounts, through social media, through various other channels. Now, this is the kind of uh, broad method that we are trying to use in the A2K program in uh, building the Indian language Wikipedias and we are hopeful that in another two to three years down the line, we will have, uh, we would have been successful in creating massive knowledge platforms in Indian languages. Thank you. And uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, one small announcement. If anyone is particularly interested to know how does one contribute on Wikipedia or questions like yours, Siddharth, you know, this has happened or 
you know, for instance, people have questions about how authentic it is, whatever it is about Wikipedia, you can contact me or Subhashish. We, we, are, uh, we will run a small training program here itself in the evening once we are all done. But right now, questions on the presentation, if any. If there are no questions, then I will do a question and answer exercise. Sorry. Yeah, it, it is there, right, uh, Siddharth, but that's why the problem is uh, here, if you see, this is the usage, page views per month. These are each uh, Wikipedia's page views that come out every month almost. So these are mostly unique page views. These are not repetitive or same page views. Any, any further questions? Uh, but I would urge that you all need to get on to your respective language Wikipedias in your institutions. You can encourage people, tell them. This is something, as I say, you know, uh, the, the sharing culture has to be nurtured by us. So we have to be the change. So I would, uh, I would really look forward to seeing more people in the evening for the training workshop, which will be about half an hour. So let us see. Yeah. Okay. Great. You are there. Okay. We have one person. <laughs> Okay, two. <laughs> a any further questions? I think it was a very simple presentation. Uh, we will also be distributing uh, two documents. One is a complete guide on creating a Wikipedia article and one is a simple two-page document if you want to immediately get onto Wikipedia and contribute something. You can use it otherwise. Uh, confuse that. Uh, and the grey bars give you different uh, indices. So I'm right now looking at total articles. So this is for Hindi, the growth of total articles from early 2009 to late 2012, uh, January 2013 really. And this point gives you, um, and you can uh, hover on the points and see the, the date and the, the views for, for that month. Isn't it? Right. Surely, so it has a yeah, absolutely. Oh, really? It seems like that. Yeah. December, which month is it? Twice it doesn't. So it's December. Uh, so January 2000. That that's because it. Uh, uh, we can clearly say it, those articles have been created by bots. Right. Uh, those two uh, months, you can see December, Jan, and Feb. Uh, the articles were created by bots on a particular theme. Uh, because we know the history of the Hindi <laughs> Wikipedia otherwise. Bots means you write a program, take a particular data set. For instance, uh, in Telugu Wikipedia, they have created uh, 20,000 articles in one month. What did they do? They collected all the village names, which mandal it is, which district it is. They wrote a program, and the program goes and creates an article for every village on the Telugu Wikipedia. Oh, it doesn't really that, just a place. Yeah, just, it, it just creates a new article on that particular village, which is a really not a qualitative article. In that sense, there are hardly two lines about that particular village. So, which becomes a challenge later, you know, to expand those articles or the relevance of that article as a knowledge, this thing, or as an informative thing. Speech to text, uh, Nirmita, you have to talk. This is about you. Yes. Speech to text, text to speech. Speech to text there is uh, random. So I know, but I think there are uh, for Indian languages, I don't think so. For English. Right. Yeah, so for English, I think there are. In which session were we discuss, discussing yesterday about technology being developed in CDAC and it's not available outside? Uh, one of Pranisha's sessions, I think, 
and uh, they have been developing at least text to speech I know for since speech to text is different I know but I, I, I'm saying speech to text I've answered I don't think I, I don't think there are uh, any robust speech to text Indian language synthesizers text to speech CDAC has been working since 1990 I think and still not working and is still not outside uh, we have a project to develop that, but I think that that will come in another session, so I won't take up Vishnu's session on that. But you're welcome to talk with me about that project outside. I think tomorrow or day after. When, I, when are you talking about it? I, don't I think, think the last day. Yeah, accessible. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, 12. A anything else or can we break for? Good? Okay, thank you all.